Let's try to understand how can a plane fly. But what does to fly mean? To fly means to create a force component which is opposite or at least equal to the weight. The physicists call this force lift. The way to create this force can change according to the fluid we are in and to other factors. Moreover, there are aerostatic forces which exploit Archimedes' principle, like hot air balloons, but we won't deal with these because we are looking for an aerodynamic nature force. Aero means that we refer to air as our reference fluid. Varying the height, the air density and pressure decrease. Dynamic, because related to the movement. If there isn't relative movement between the object and the air, there is no force. It is exactly the same thing as moving the object in still air or as moving the air while holding the object. This principle allows us to study experimentally forces in wind tunnels. The aerodynamic force is not directed precisely in the same direction as the weight, but it can be decomposed into two components. One in the opposite direction of the weight, called lift, and one which opposes the motion, called drag. Therefore, we must provide a boost to move the plane to one direction, that is, the plane must have an engine. To be more precise, the lift is not always directed in the same direction of the weight, but it is perpendicular to the feed rate, while the drag is directed in the direction opposite to the rate one. Therefore, only in the case of a uniform rectilinear motion, the forces are directed as in the picture, while during takeoff, landing or acceleration, it is different. The first flight took place in 1903 by the Wright brothers. Since then, two parts have been developed. The engine, which allows the relative movement, and the wing, which allows the plane to take off, exploiting the relative movement itself. In the Wright brothers' airplane, two surfaces can be noticed in the front, horizontal tail, and two in the back, vertical tail. These surfaces consent both to maneuver the plane, that means moving in the space, and to make the plane stable, controlling the aerodynamic force, avoiding tilts and wears. These surfaces are also present in planes today, as we can see on Airbus A380, in which both the vertical and horizontal tails are placed at the back. On both tails, there are surfaces that can be moved, the rudder to change direction and the stabilizer made of surfaces that can rotate, allowing the plane to ascend and descend. The wing has surfaces that can be set in motion. In particular, at the edge, there are the ailerons used to rotate the wing from left to right. The airplane can make six movements. Three translations, left, right, forward, backward, up, down, and three rotations around the three axes. The important magnitudes for the air are temperature, density, and pressure, related to each other by the ideal gas law. The pressure is the effect of a force applied to a surface. However, Taking into consideration a steady surface in the air, the wing, the pressure is equal on all the points, so the force is zero. In order to make the force different from zero, the pressure must change. In other fluids, different from air, it can be seen that they move in a very dissimilar way, depending on the fluid's speed, Reynolds number. In the picture, it can be noticed that depending on the fluid's speed of leakage from a tube, it passes from a rectilinear or laminar motion to a turbulent or a chaotic one, even in the early phase. Therefore, speed is a very important parameter for a flight. Besides Reynolds' number, March's number is important too, given by the ratio of the speed of the plane to the speed of sound. 
Since air, unlike sound, which is 340 meters per second fast, behaves in a different way, depending on its speed. Near to these speed values, air behaves totally differently. At low speed, it is thought to be an incompressible fluid with a constant density. On the contrary, at high speed, it becomes compressible, that is, its density can vary continuously, and so do pressure and temperature. In the graphic, the airplanes are situated in the area where Reynolds and March's numbers are quite high. In the wind tunnels, the fluid's behavior can be studied. Milan's tunnel is made by two test rooms. The object to be tested is put in the lower room, where an airflow is blown onto it, powered by a strong fan system. In the upper room, the fluid has a lower speed, and its use is to check the impact on buildings and surrounding areas. The air is colored with smoke in order to see it better. The smoking lines can be observed, that is the locus of points occupied by the particles in the stationary fluid. In the picture is visible a sectional view of the wing's airfoil. Right, and part of it passes below where the lines follow the shape. While part goes above, where some white marks can be seen. The flow does not follow the shape anymore, and it becomes turbulent. We can see some pictures where the flow from laminar becomes turbulent. As we said, there is no need to vary the pressure in order to make the force different from zero. Because of the principle of action and reaction, the aim is to divert the air downwards as efficiently as possible, so that as a consequence there will be an upward thrust. The airfoil in the picture is able to determine a speed change, and therefore a pressure change, on the individual particles. Basic principles of aerodynamics Conservation of mass Mass can neither be created nor destroyed Conservation of energy There is no known exception to this law It is exact so far as we know It states that there is a certain quantity, which we call energy, that does not change in the mainful changes which nature undergoes that is a most abstract idea, because it is a mathematical principle. It says that there is a numerical quantity which does not change when something happens. It is not a description of a mechanism or anything concrete. It is just a strange fact that we can calculate some number and when we're finished watching nature go through her tricks and calculate the number again, it is the same. The continuity equation is deduced from the conservation of mass, whereby, if the fluid's density does not change, the product between the fluid's speed and the section through which the fluid flows is constant. Bernoulli's equation is deduced from the conservation of energy. Talking about an airplane wing, we can omit the variation of potential energy. So, if the particle's speed increases, the pressure must decrease. In the lower part of the wing, the pressure remains almost the same, while in the upper part, is much lower. This difference between the two pressures causes an upward thrust. Measures of the fluid's speed
The measure of the speed depends on the angle of incidence, which is the angle between the relative wind and the integral reference with the airfoil. The cord is a segment that joins the leading edge with the trailing edge. If the angle of incidence is zero, the pressure difference is relatively small. Increasing the angle of incidence, the pressure difference increases considerably. So, it is important to estimate the airfoil's shape in order to avoid the making of a force with a big component in the speed's direction that is, a big drag. Then, there is to estimate the pressure coefficient, that is, the ratio of the pressure that works on the airfoil, minus the atmospheric pressure, to the dynamic pressure, in order to collect information on the aerodynamics properties of the airfoil. This is done in the wind tunnel piercing the airfoil and measuring the pressure point by point. Once this is done, there is to work out the lift coefficient as a function of the angle of incidence. In the picture is reported the trend regarding two airfoils, one bent, for which the lift is different from zero for a zero angle, and one symmetrical, for which, having a zero angle, the lift is zero. In both cases, the lift increases linearly, together with the angle of incidence, until it comes to a stalemate. This is what is seen near the airfoil. The air tends to go from higher pressure areas to lower pressure areas. In order to obtain the opposite effect, a work must be done. This can be made with a variation in section. If the tube area becomes bigger, the speed decreases and the pressure increases. So, on the edge of the airfoil, there is a high pressure and the air does not go on that zone, but it tends to come back. Raising the angle of incidence, this effect increases until all the area behind advances, and the lift cannot be obtained anymore. This is what happens with other incidence angles. The fluid does not follow the shape anymore, but it goes on its own. There is no more pressure difference, stalemate. Increasing the angle of incidence, a separation arises. Until a situation of stalemate arrives, there is a maximum angle of incidence beyond which we cannot go. The drag changes depending on the object. It can be seen that the drag of the airfoil and of the following cylindrical shape with a smaller diameter is the same, whereas it is different in other cases. The shape of the object becomes very important in order to have a low drag with the same lift. The final result is the aerodynamic efficiency, the ratio of the lift to the drag, tangent of the angle. In the picture, there is the comparison between the three different shapes, plate, bent plate and airfoil. The lift is given by the wing, whereas body, gears and tails give the drag.